Hi, it's Lana from Baker Art. So tonight I'm not going to do a painting as the title suggests. I'm doing a video on what things I consider to be the basics that you need to start for acrylic pouring. And then I will move on to a few other things that have made my life easier, tips and tricks that I have found over the course of my first few months of painting. Okay, so straight away we'll get into protect your surface, okay? whatever way you choose to do that. I have a plastic tarp that I have taped to my table at all times because I use my dining room table. And over the top of that, I use baking paper, which is just, you can get at any supermarket. Some people use these puppy pee pads. Um, I have a couple left over from when my puppy was training. I will probably use them up just to see how they go, but I won't be buying them for this purpose. I'm quite happy with my baking paper. You can use newspaper, you can use plastic sheeting, you can use cardboard, you can use whatever you want, okay? Just put something down because you'll be annoyed with yourself if you don't and then you have to clean up. Okay, so basic art. You are going to need a surface to paint on. So either your canvas or... So these ones I got from Kmart here in Australia. They're four pack for $5, so relatively cheap to start with. And... You can also get these wood rounds that came out. You can probably get them at any craft store. You can make uh, coasters out of those. You can make coasters out of tiles. You can even frame these if you do like a couple of tiles. You can put them in a nice frame. Um, just shop around to get a price because Bunnings isn't cheap for these. Now, you can paint on any surface you like. I don't recommend though that you get those canvas panels because they warp. Okay, they may be a lot cheaper than, than these canvases, but they will most probably warp and then you'll be disappointed because you might have a nice pour that you're really happy with um, and it might warp and the paint might move. So I don't suggest those when you're starting out. Okay, now one thing you must have, you cannot do acrylic pouring without acrylic paint. Any acrylic paint will do. Okay, so they come in all different sizes and price ranges. Okay, so this is your Liquitex Basics, more expensive here in Australia, along with like the Amsterdam and Arteza and all of those kinds of ones. I wasn't prepared to pay the price of these expensive paints when I was starting out because I was just learning and making lots of mistakes. And so I started off with the cheap stuff. I'm still using the cheap stuff. I have not even gone, even tried using the more expensive stuff yet. I've only got a couple of those. These are some good brands that you can get cheaply. Montmart, you can get that at any discount store. It's about three or four dollars. Crafty Color, you can get these from Bunnings. They're two dollars a tube, and you know I really like these ones. They're pretty good. You can also get these are good. Araldo Di Paolo from Riot. They're a thicker paint. Okay, so you these will go a lot further as well. And they always have 50% off. You get these big 500 mils, one for $10 and the 250 mil for $5 or thereabouts. Um, and that special runs a lot. So there you need paint. Okay, now you need some kind of cup or vessel to mix in. So you can collect like old yogurt containers. You can use whatever you want to use. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be cups. Cups are just easier. Um, different sizes. I only use this one for pouring the base of a like Dutch pour or something like that when I need to mix a bigger amount of paint. I don't use cups very much at all now. I did in the beginning but now because I do it all the time I have I'll show you what I do with them later. You can get different sizes. I do recommend something small if you can get these cups I got them from Kmart um, or any kind of small container um, because if you only want to mix a small amount of paint what happens if you if you use one of these and you only want to do a little bit of paint by the time you pour it out you're going to lose half of it um, on the wall of your cup do you know what I mean so it's it's good to have a a small thing if you can these also or any of the cups can double as a as stands to keep your paint up yeah, painting up off the surface you don't have to you can paint it flat like that pour like that but you will find it difficult to get your hands under without wrecking the sides 
If you want to lift it up, you will find it difficult to get the painting off when it is dry. It will probably stick to whatever it is on. So if you have it up on that, you can get your hands under easily and you can also, it won't stick, it'll, it'll dry better. So what else we got? We've got, you need stirring sticks, okay? Something to stir with, it doesn't have to be sticks. You can use plastic spoons if you want. I've got sticks, you can get different sizes. I use the small ones mostly. I use the big ones when I'm using these taller cups because it gets to the bottom. Just a little point on that. Do not throw these away. They are not single use. You can use these over and over and over again. Uh, all you do is let them dry. Uh, I wipe them down when I'm finished with them with just a tissue and they dry. They go back in here for the next time and the paint will not go into the next lot of paint as long as you let it dry first. These aren't necessaries, but I'm going to mention them because they're probably one of my most used things. I always have sitting next to me a box of tissues. I always have a packet of baby wipes. And just a little tip, I always open it when I start and have one ready to go. Because if, if something happens and you need to quickly clean up, you don't want to be fumbling around with trying to get these out. So just make sure you close it at the end or they'll dry out. Gloves, if you want. I don't use them a lot anymore. I find them a little bit annoying. I need to get some really sort of good fitting ones. These ones were really loose and I felt like they were in my way. I'm gonna get some nice tight ones next time so that it's just like my fingers, do you know what I mean? Um, if you don't use gloves, then all I suggest is have a little toothbrush or a soft brush for your nails because the paint, if you don't use it, uh, glove, your paint will go all down in every crevice in your fingernail. So I always use that afterwards. Okay, so those are things that I consider to be your must-haves to start with. So you don't have to spend a fortune to start with. Okay, you need a surface, you need paint, you need something to put, mix it in, and you need something to mix it with. Okay, and probably something to clean up with. Okay, now I didn't list these in your necessities because you don't have to have them. You can mix your paint with just water. Most people, if you've watched other videos, will have a pouring medium. Um, I started off with PVA glue, and this is just Par Fix, it's called from Bunnings. Okay, mix that with water. I will talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, and Floetrol is another option. So there's different versions, okay? So this is the Australian Floetrol. And then there's a, I think there's a US version, there's a European version. I can't get anything but this one here in Australia. I know a lot of people want the Australian one overseas and can't get it. We've got only the Australian one here. And it's not cheap here, it's $56 for this one, as opposed to what you pay for your well, this is four litres, I think that's what you call a gallon over in America. Um, you know, $13 or $15 or something, yeah, we have to pay $56. Um, I use mostly that mixed with water. I use the flow trial for certain things uh, when I want, because it's a bit more expensive, when I want cells or I'm doing a swipe or stuff like that. I reserve the flow trial just for certain things because I'm quite happy with the result I get with the PVA. Um, I'll show you how I mix that. So this is, I've gotten a few of these bottles from Kmart, I think they're $1.50, they're sauce bottles. And I pre-mix my PVA. So in here is two parts of PVA and one part of water, okay? And then that is pre-mixed, ready to go. So when I go to mix my paints, I just use this. I don't have to worry about getting this out. This just sits at the bottom of my shelf. I don't get that out until I need to refill this okay so that just makes life easier i've got a few of these bottles and the only things i pre-mix in these big bottles are the pba i mix my white and i mix my black because they're the ones that i use the most okay so i have them in a bigger bottle so those bottles are handy to have uh, you've also got you don't have to buy those bottles you can use any bottle this is an old gatorade bottle it's funny how you make purchases depending on stuff that you may need for painting. My son was sick and he wanted a Gatorade and so I really wanted the big bottle. So instead of getting him the small Gatorade, I got him the big one. 
you make your purchases as you uh, need your stuff. Now this is a old milk bottle, which I use, I have my White House paint in here. So it just makes it easier. I've got a four litre tin of paint in the garage. I'm not gonna you know, muck around with the paint tin every time. So I decant it into here and then I can use my White House paint out of here. This one, I just have Floetrol in it. So all it's got is that straight Floetrol. It's just decanted into here so that it's easier to use. Okay, some other ideas for storage. This is just one of the cups. I've got, this is full of paint, which was a failed scrape, uh, you know, a scrape from a failed Dutch pot. All I have is cling wrap on the top and a rubber band over the top to hold it in place. You can see there. And that is airtight, that will be fine. Um, I did that about a week ago. The paint in there is still absolutely fine. And another option is I've got these little plastic containers and I just put all the paint in there. So I collect all of my drips and all of my failed scrapes in the beginning. I don't know if it was just me, whether I was just stupid, but I used to, if I used to scrape something, I would scrape it all off. It would be on the baking paper. I would wrap up the baking paper and put it in the bin. And all that paint got thrown away until one day I had a light bulb moment and I went, you know, there's nothing wrong with this paint. It can be reused. It will just be a unique color because it's gonna have all the different colors mixed in and you probably won't be able to replicate it, but there's nothing wrong with that paint and it can be reused. All right, some other things that are handy to have. Uh, this is for the back of your canvas, okay? This is just a spray bottle with water. These are push pins that I got from Kmart and masking tape okay now a lot of people don't do anything with the back of their canvas a lot of people do i am one of the ones that does and i will link up the top here now a video that i did which shows you how to do it with just these four things so this one as well so this is just packing foam that comes in uh, fridges or washing machines or furniture and I just put a call out on my local Facebook page and a woman had just gotten something delivered and was just about to throw it away and so I got a garbage bag full of this stuff. Watch the video, um, it will show you what to do with all of these things. Okay, as I said, it's not necessary. A lot of people just leave the back as is. This is one thing, I, I do consider it a necessity for me. It's not a necessity at all really, but you will it will come in handy. So this is just your um, butane torch. Okay, just got that one from Bunnings. You get your refill. That will help with, um, you know, you use it to blow out air bubbles and it will also help reveal cells in certain um, situations. Now, depending on the type of pores you want to do, there will be some little bits and pieces that you will need. As the name suggests, bottle bottom pour. So that's just the bottle cut, the bottom of a bottle cut off. Buy a nice bottle when you're in the shops when you want to drink. You lift them all up and you have a look and see which one's got the pretty bottoms on it, and then you can use that. Uh, if you want to do a string pull, I just have a roll of cotton twine, um, similar to that is the chain pull so this is ball chain that you can just get on ebay relatively cheaply uh, a lot of people do a funnel pour this is just a fold up one you can get the non fold up ones that was just from kmart for dollar fifty. now when i say things are relatively cheap yes they are on their own okay but when you are adding everything up it can be a bit expensive to start with so i haven't bought everything all in one go but also once you have something you have it like you don't have to buy this again you don't have to buy the chain again you can clean that and reuse it you don't you know that roll of stuff is going to last a long time um you know that i don't have to buy again i don't have to buy the push pins again all that kind of stuff so a lot of these things you don't have to keep outlaying it's just going to be your your paint and your mediums and stuff like that that you're going to have to keep chopping up uh, another thing is, another type of pour is your swipes. So these you can get for free. Just pick them up at the paint store, Bunnings hardware store. Um, they're just the paint swat, uh, swatches, what they're called. This is just a plastic folder thing that I had that I've cut up into various sizes. That is good for a swipe. 
Uh, what else? We've got the, I only just got these and I really do love them. I bought these on eBay. They were $10 for a five pack of palette knives. You will use them for, like if you want to pour the paint um, for a base for something and spread it out, okay? So it makes it easy to spread along. And also you can use it for a swipe. Okay, so you can use this, you can use this, you can use this, you can use, you can use a business card, you can use a piece of cardboard, you can use a paper towel for a swipe, all different sorts of things. They're just some things that, you know, if you've got laying around, you can use. All right. Again, not a necessity, but it is for me a pair of tweezers. Pick up all the little bits of dust or something that might fall onto your painting. Straws I like to have. Um, I have the silicon ones now. You don't have to, you can just get these. This is one that came with like a McDonald's or a Hungry Jack's drink that we got one time. The only difference between these two is, as you can see, this one is a bit more flexible. So it's not gonna bend it, like fold over in half like that. You've got a bit of movement with that. Whereas this one, as soon as you try to start to go around a corner, it's gonna not work as well. But just adjust your angle and you're fine to use the free one. Uh, okay, not everybody's cup of tea. This is for me though. Um, I measure my paint. So this is just a scale that I got from Kmart. I think it was about $10. And I will only measure my paint. I don't eyeball anything. I'm not that type of person. I'm like one of those cooks that can't cook without a recipe. So I like to measure everything. So if you're one of those people, pick yourself up a little cheap scale. Okay, so this is what I now use for my paint. So when I said I don't really use cups much anymore because I decided to continue on with this painting gig, um, I bought myself squeezy bottles. Now they, um, these ones I got were $20 for 20, so they work out a dollar each. You can get them at junk shops, you can get them anywhere. I got these off eBay, I love them. There's lots of different ones. You pre-mix the paint in that and then you're ready to go. There's less clean up, there's less prep time because I have these ready to go. I just pick out the colours I want, squirt them on, do my painting. There's no cleaning up cups or anything afterwards. Another thing that you might want, this is coconut milk. So I've thrown out the original bottle, but I will put a screenshot up of it now. Okay, so that's just so you know which is the one. This is the OGX, coconut milk hair serum. All right, I don't use this. I have it, I've used it once, I don't particularly like it. But if you're into those paintings, which see I do more of the Dutch pours and stuff like that. But if you wanna do more of the flip cups and the things that have the cells and you need some kind of, um, you can do it with just paint consistency, but it's a lot easier if you can just add one of these in. So a lot of people use this one. There's um, treadmill silicon, people use WD-40, people use personal lubricant like KY lubricant. Um, there's all different types of ones you can use. This one I had just seen and you know I'd seen so many people talk about it, I thought I needed to have it when I first started but depending on what type of pour you want to do. And Depending on if you're going to keep stuff, how into this you get, you may need something to seal with. So this is just an ac uh, acrylic paint spray, a clear gloss one. And then this is a what's that, clear gloss varnish that comes in a liquid that you paint on with a brush. You can use resin. Um, I, that's not something I've gotten into, so I don't have any of that. And last but not least, for me, is my trusty hair dryer which is also the bane of my existence because it kills my life when I'm trying to do Dutch pours. The low setting is too low and the high setting is too high but anyway a lot of people have a lot of success with them but just make sure that you have this concentrated nozzle on the end and this is my little pet favourite, uh, the mini blower. Okay so that is what I use most of the time now. All right, so that is it for me for tonight. There are just a few things that I consider to be essential and then your little creature comforts that make your life a little bit easier. 
so I'm not going to list all of this in the description because it is a lot of stuff there. If there's anything, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Happy to answer anything you like. And um, yeah, hopefully you found something a little bit helpful here. I know it can be a little bit daunting when you're first starting out and there's so many different videos and you can't work out because everybody's using different things and you can't work out exactly what you need just as a basic to start. But uh, hopefully you found this helpful and um, yeah, I will be back next time to do another painting and I will see you then. Thanks for joining me. Bye.